Welcome to the Holy Land in this biblical site of Shechem. This is a place very little visited because it's in the West Bank. It's hard to get here. We rented a taxi, a driver, a special driver to get here. It's hardly visited. We have some other people here in the area that are watching this with us and taking pictures of us because it's they, har they hardly get any tourism here and so they're wanting tourism in Shechem. So tourists uh, come here. Anyway, um, we're in the Shechem, the biblical Shechem in this tell here and you can see in the background this is is Mount uh, Gerasim and on the other side is Mount Ebal. So we're going to be talking about this. This is a rich place. There's so many things in Scripture that happened here. This place is first mentioned in Genesis 12:6, in connection with Abraham's journey from Haran to the Promised Land in response to God's call on his life. At the Oak of Moriah, he reared his first altar to the Lord in Palestine. So right here is where Abraham first came into the Promised Land and reared his first tent and uh, passed uh, through here. It was here that Jacob came and settled after meeting with his estranged brother Esau upon his return from Padam Aram in Genesis 33 18. And to the east of the city, Jacob pitched his tent in a parcel of ground which he bought from Homar, Shechem's father, as found in Genesis 33 19. So Shechem was named after a person. Here also uh, he raised an altar and called on El Elohi, which is Israel, the God of Israel, as noted in Genesis 33, 20. Then follows a story of Dinah's defilement by Shechem, son of the city's chief, and the treacherous and terrible vengeance exacted by uh, Simeon and Levi, found in Genesis uh, 34. It was in Shechem that Jacob buried his foreign gods and committed himself fully to the true and living God of his forefathers, upon settling in Shechem after returning from Padam Aram as recounted in Genesis 35. To the rich pasture land near Shechem, Joseph came to seek his brethren and was sold into slavery and taken to Egypt as found in Genesis 37. So it was right here in Shechem where Joseph was sold into slavery and went down to Egypt. It was in Shechem, which lies between the two famous mountains of Mount Ebal and Mount Gerasim, that Moses commanded the Israelites, once they had entered into the Promised Land, to pronounce the blessings of God for their obedience to Him and the curses of God for their disobedience to Him. These blessings and cursings were given by dividing up the Israelites into two groups and having one group pronounce God's blessings for obedience and one group pronounce God's curses for disobedience. In Deuteronomy 27, which is a very famous uh, passage of Scripture to which all of the prophets, when God judges Israel, will refer back to this monumentous place where the blessings were given and the curses. So when God deported the Israelites first into Assyria, the ten tribes, and then the southern two tribes into Babylon, it was referring back to the curses that God was fulfilling because the Israelites' disobedience. So in Deuteronomy 27 it says, Moses charged the people, saying, When you have crossed over the Jordan, these shall stand on Mount Gerizim to bless the people, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, and Joseph, and Benjamin. And these shall stand on Mount Ebal for the curse, Reuben, Gad, Asher, Zebulun, Dan, and Nephtali. So they were divided up and there's blessings given first for obedience and then curses given for disobedience. So it's right here between the two mountains of Mount Gerizim and Mount Ebal that this takes place. When his end was approaching, Joshua gathered the tribes of Israel here and addressed them with his final words of counsel and exhortation as found in Je uh, Joshua 24. Uh, so you can see this is a very key place, rich, rich in biblical history. After Joshua and the Israelites had conquered the Promised Land, Joseph's bones were buried uh, in the parcel of ground in Shechem. And you can see on this video the actual tomb of Joseph as a fulfillment. Joseph made them promise that his bones would be carried back from Egypt and buried right here in Shechem. And they are right here to this day. And you can see in this video the tomb where his, bear, his bones are buried. This is found in Joshua. Joshua 24. In the time of the kings, 
we find that the city was more a gathering place for the nation. It was a, uh, it was a central gathering place for the nation. It was evidently the center or the capital city, especially for the northern tribes. And hither Rehoboam came in hope of getting his succession to the throne confirmed as found in 1 Kings 12. And, and Chronicles uh, 10. Uh, Jeroboam fortified this city and made it his residence as seen in 2 Chronicles uh, 10 25 and Jeroboam was a wicked king who established golden altars in Bethel and in, in Dan and caused the northern tribes to fall away from the Lord because he didn't want them to go to, to Jerusalem so uh, J Jeroboam resided here. Uh, Shechem also in the Bible called Sychar in John chapter 4 is the place Jesus met the woman at the well and conversed with her. She referred to one of the mountains of either Ebal or Gerasim as the mountain on which the Samaritans worshipped. So it was right here that Jesus passed through and met the woman at the well. And you can see in this video uh, Jacob's well that we visited. Jacob's well is located underneath the first floor of this Greek Orthodox Church. So here we are going down underneath to see Jacob's well. And we actually had the privilege of drinking water out of this well. Anyway, the Samaritans worshipped uh, one of the mountains here uh, because they believed that, uh, that they didn't go to the temple, they didn't believe in Judaism, so they were kind of an offshoot of that, so they worshipped here. So it's right here that Jesus passed through, right in this area, and met with the woman at the well. And let's take a look at that account because that's such a precious account here. So in John, we have this setting where Jesus is passing through, uh, returning to Galilee, and he meets with this woman at the well. And it says, Now when Jesus learned that the Pharisees had heard that Jesus was making and baptizing more disciples than John, although Jesus himself did not baptize, but only his disciples, he left Judea and departed again for Galilee. And he had to pass through Samaria. So he took the route that we took coming here, right from Jerusalem, Judea, right through the north to Galilee, and so he passed right through here. So it says he had to pass. Uh, through Samaria. So he came to the town of Samaria called Sychar, which is the New Testament word for Shechem, which is this place here, near the field that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there also. So Jesus, wearied as, uh, as he was from his journey, was sitting beside the well. So Jesus was sitting beside Jacob's well that you can see in this video here, and we had the privilege of drinking water out of that well. Uh, it was about the sixth hour, which was about uh, uh, noon, uh, 12 o'clock, so it was hot. A woman from Samaria, so right in this area, came to draw water. Jesus saw, said to her, Give me a drink. For his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask for a drink from me, a woman of Samaria? For Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. To desert people, uh, water was their life, so living water was extremely precious. The woman said to him, Sir, you have nothing to draw water with, and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob? So once again, Jacob resided here. Uh, his well is here. Uh, he gave us the, uh, the well and drank from it himself, as did his sons and his livestock. Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks of the water that I will give him shall never be thirsty again. The water that I will give him will become in him a spring of living water, welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I may not so that I might not be thirsty again or have to come here to draw water. She was still thinking on the physical plane, literal plane. Uh, Jesus said to her, Go call your husband and come here. The woman answered him, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, You are right in saying I have no husband, for you have had five husbands, and the one you now have is not your husband. Uh, what you have said is true. The woman said to him, Sir, 
I perceive that you are a prophet, which rightly so. He just foretold or, or told her all about uh, her life. Our fathers worshiped on this mountain, but she says, you say that you should worship in Jerusalem. Where is the place to worship? So anyway, Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem you will worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is now here, when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father is seeking such people to worship Him. God is spirit, and those who worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. The woman said to Him, I know that the Messiah is coming. He was called Christ. When he comes, he will tell us all things. Jesus said to her, I who speak to you am he. Just then his disciples came back. They marveled that he was talking with a woman, but no one said, What do you seek? Or why are you talking with her? So the woman left her water jar and went away into the town, right here behind us, to the people. Come and see a man who told me all that I ever did. Can this be the Christ? So they went out of the town and were coming to him. And uh, so then it says uh, in verse uh, 39, it says that many Samaritans from the town then believed on Christ because of the woman's testimony. He told me all that I ever did. So when the Samaritans came to him, they asked him to stay with them. Him, and he stayed here uh, two days. He stayed right here in, in two days with uh, uh, those in Shechem, and many came to believe on Christ. Uh, they said to the woman, It is no longer because of what you said that we believe, for we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this is indeed the Savior of the world. After the two days, then he departed for Galilee. So, uh, what can we observe, and what do we see that happened right here? Well, Right here in Shechem, uh, Abraham first reared an altar uh, to the Lord. When he came from Mesopotamia, he, this is where he first reared an, uh, an altar uh, to the Lord and worshiped the Lord. It was here that Jacob came and settled after his meeting with his estranged brother Esau upon returning from Padam Aram. So uh, Jacob came here and, and resided and, and settled here. Uh, uh, Dinah's defilement took place here. It was in Shechem that Jacob buried his foreign gods and committed himself fully to the true and living God of his forefathers. To the rich pasture land near Shechem, Joseph came to seek his brethren and was sold into slavery and taken to Egypt. It was in Shechem, which lies between the two famous mountains of Mount Ebal and Mount Gerizim, that Moses commanded the Israelites that once they had entered the Promised Land, they were to pr pronounce the blessings of God for obedience to Him and the curses of God for disobedience to Him. And when His end was approach approaching, Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel here and addressed them in his final words of counsel and exhortation. And after Joshua and, and the Israelites had conquered the Promised Land, jo uh, Joseph's bones were returned from Egypt and buried right here in Shechem. And we've seen the t tomb of that. And Shechem, also called Sicker in John chapter 4, is a place Jesus met the woman at the well and conversed with her. So what a rich place. What a rich place in the biblical history of all that God did in the nation uh, through, uh, through this place here. So, it causes me to reflect upon my own life and ask myself uh, some questions. Of all the events that happened here at Shechem, Jesus summed up the whole desire of God for us and the place and this place when he told the woman at the well that the true worshipers would worship him in spirit and in truth. So as you think back over the rich history of all that God did here, right here in Shechem, uh, he, Jesus sums it up in, in John chapter 4 when his true desire of everything that took place, all the blessings, the cursings, Abraham coming, his, his working through the nation of Israel to, to speak to the world. It's all summed up in God desires us to worship Him in spirit and in truth. Truth as revealed through His Word to us. That's how we know God. So it caused me to reflect upon that. So I asked myself, and maybe you would ask yourself, are we true worshipers of God, worshiping Him in spirit, and are we worshiping Him in truth as found in God's Word? So hopefully you've enjoyed uh, this rich uh, place here. It's been hard to get here. We're grateful that we're here. God's supernatural blessing and protection is upon us. And we would invite the other tourists to come here. It is rather safe. So anyway, thank you for watching and God bless.